get a doctorate in math? No, I don't have a doctorate in math. You can. Oh. But um, no, I don't have one. All right, so um, in this case, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do is look into using the remainder theorem. And basically what the remainder theorem says is if you're given a 0, so if you're given a 0, you can determine if, uh, what the remainder is. And remember, if the remainder is 0, then that actually is a 0 of the polynomial. Um, so all you simply need to do was just do p of 4. So wherever there is an x, you're now going to replace that with a 4. And that's simply all you need to do. Um, 4 to the fourth power, 64 times 4, 256. It is on the board as well. Um, 4 cubed is going to be 64. Um, plus 7 times 16. Minus 20 plus 11. OK? Ah, um, oh, geez. 512. 512. Um, this one's going to, thank you very much. One out of what? 112. 40, 40. And then minus 20 plus 11. So does anybody want to go through this and see what exactly this would be? Because I don't want to do all this mental math. 8 equals 39? Good. OK, so that means the remainder is 39. So if the remainder is 39, and we're going to double check this. We're going to verify our answer. If the remainder is 39, then is this a 0? No, because, that, because what the factor theorem says is the factor theorem says if you have a remainder of 0, then you have a factor. And your 0 is actually a real 0. It's a solution of your polynomial. But what's nice about the remainder theorem is you can check to see what the remainder is by plugging in the 0. The other way to check it to see if it's a 0 is to use synthetic division. So to use synthetic division, make sure that's in standard form, which it is. 2, negative 9, 7, negative 5. 11. And what we should have is the remainder is going to be exactly the same, meaning this would not be a 0. So let's check it. Bring down the 2. 2 times 4 is 8. Negative 9 plus 8 is negative 1. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. 7 plus negative 4 is 3. 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. Negative 7 or negative 5 plus 12 is a negative 7. Negative 7 times 4 is going to be a negative 28. Am I doing my math wrong or am I getting a different answer? What? That's a positive. Oh, it's positive 7. But that's still positive 28. What the heck am I doing? You're right. No. Oh, 3 times 4. Gotcha. <laughs> 3 times 4 is 12. That becomes a positive 7. 7 times 4 is a positive 28. There we go. That becomes 39. Thank you. So do you guys see how the remainder theorem works? Yes? I don't know. I'm going off of what students told me. So you, type, you checked in negative 9 times 67? OK. Does anybody else? OK. I know. It's, I was just going out. I didn't want to do all the math in my head, so I just asked students to tell me what they were. But if. I didn't hear you offering any suggestions. Um, but anyways, the main important thing, guys, is yes, yeah, synthetic division works. But I'm just telling you, you might be asked to use the remainder theorem. Just know that the remainder theorem synthetic division is basically the same thing. It's just telling you what the rent. The only difference is this just tells you what the remainder is. That's it. Whereas synthetic division, if the remainder is 0, it also, the quotient is also now a factor, which in case I asked you to factor it completely, or if I asked you to find all the zeros, you could use that. Whereas this is just going to tell you, you know, what the remainder is or not. All right.